Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Tutorium in Intensive English. My name is Katie, and today's pronunciation lesson is about the intonation that we use with tag questions. Before we get into the pronunciation of it all, we're going to take a moment to review some important grammatical features of tag questions. This is going to be pretty basic though. Okay, so first thing, what is a tag question? Tag question is a, a little question that we tag on to the end of a statement. Okay, so we have a statement and then at the end comes a small short question. For example, that makes sense, doesn't it? So my doesn't it is the question that appears at the end of my statement. That makes sense. <clears throat> so there are a couple options that we have when we are building tag questions. We're going to go over those together. Oh, I forgot my little circle, doesn't it? There's our tag. Okay. So our first option when we're creating a tag question is to start with a positive statement and then make our tag question a negative tag. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's look at an example. This is fun, isn't it? So in this uh, instance, this is fun, the statement contains a positive statement. That just means there are no negative grammatical words in that statement. Compared with, isn't it, that contains a negative not, is not. Okay, so that's what I mean by positive and negative. I'm referring to the grammar. Let's look at another example and I'll circle and highlight these differences for you. You're having fun, aren't you? So in the statement, this is a positive statement because it doesn't contain any negative words like not. I'm talking about in this case, you are having fun. And then our tag is negative, right? Because it contains not, are, not, you. <laughs> okay, so that's a negative tag. One more example like this, you like Chicago, don't you? So do not, that's our negative. <clears throat> now we can flip this around and we can have a negative statement with a positive tag. And you guessed it, that just means now the negative is in our statement and our tag question is positive. This isn't boring, is it? So isn't, is not, the negative is in our statement and the tag, is it, is positive. Couple more examples. You're not bored, are you? Negative statement, positive tag. And one more. You don't want to go home, do you? You don't want, don't want to go home, do you? So we have a negative statement and a positive tag. Um, really quickly, one other thing, a note about our auxiliary and helping verbs. Just remember, you're going to look at the statement part of the tag question to know what type of auxiliary or helping verb is needed in the tag part of the tag question. For example, here in our very first example, that makes sense, doesn't it? The main verb in our statement is make. So I'm going to need do verb, do support in the tag. Because if I was making just a normal question with make, I would use do, right? Uh, does that make sense? So that's why I'm using do in my tag question with make. But you've probably noticed there are other times when a lot of these examples contain some form of be verb. And in those instances, my tag question is going to contain be verb as well, right? This is fun, isn't it? So my tag also has to have be verb. So remember, you just want to look at your statement. What kind of verb do I have? Is it a just a regular verb or is it a modal verb or is it be verb? And that's going to help you decide what verb 
what kind of modal or auxiliary or helping verb am I going to use in my tag question? Okay, so that's it for the grammar. We're going to get on to the pronunciation. So the first thing I want to talk about is using tag questions with a rising tone on the tag. Now, if I'm doing this, this is a real question, right? I am communicating a little bit of uncertainty when I use a rising tone. So I'm looking for confirmation from the listener, from the person that I'm speaking to. Um, we are going to hear a pitch change. So there's always going to be a pitch change, right? But then it's going to be followed by a rising tone in this case. And I'm going to hear a lot of stress on my helping verb or my auxiliary verb. And so again, what I mean by that helping an auxiliary verb is the do or be or maybe a modal like can that is going to show up in the tag part of your tag question. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at an example or two or three. So my first example, of course, is about cake because I do love cake. Um, you liked my cake, didn't you? So here I'm using rising tone and let's just break this example down a little bit. So let's look at the statement part. You, you liked my cake. Now there's not gonna be rising tone here. You liked my cake didn't you? So that's where you're going to hear the rise. So you hear kind of the stress on the didn't, didn't you? Because right? there's that negative too. Didn't you? And then you rise. You liked my cake, didn't you? You liked my cake, didn't you? And here you might imagine that if I'm using this tone, I'm worried something about the cake, something about your reaction has me questioning if it's good or maybe I just don't think it's good and I want positive feedback. But I'm really looking for you to be like, oh no, it's great, right? Or at least lie to me and tell me it's great. So I wanna confirm my, my tone communicates this lack of confidence. All right, let's look at another example. You like Chicago, so remember, I'm not gonna rise here because that's the statement. I'm gonna rise over the stress syllable in Chicago and then I'm gonna fall. You like Chicago, don't you? And that you is where you're gonna get the rise. So stress, don't you? Don't you? You like Chicago, don't you? Maybe I'm worried that you're not having a good time in Chicago or you know, you're gonna go home and say, oh, Chicago's a terrible city. So I wanna make sure, which it's not, I wanna make sure you're having fun. All right, now last one. They're happy. So I'm gonna rise over the stress syllable and the first syllable and happy. They're happy, aren't they? Aren't they? They're happy, aren't they? They're happy, aren't they? So I'm worried for some reason that these people, they, that, you know, I'm talking about, that they're not happy, that that person isn't happy. Okay, so now we talked about rising tone. Let's look at the difference, how the meaning shifts in the same questions when we use falling tone, okay? So when I use falling tone with a tag question, that lack of confidence that I had with the rising tone is gone. Okay, in this instance, I'm feeling very certain about the answer. I'm just kind of making a statement. It's not a question at all, right? I am really confirming what I already know to be true. I'm just confirming it for all of us present, right? It's just obvious. Um, so I'm kind of stating the obvious when I use falling tone with a tag question. So let's look at those same sentences again. You liked my cake, didn't you? Okay, so let's think about our tone, what the tone is doing. You liked my cake, didn't you? Didn't you? You liked my cake, didn't you? Maybe you're just, you know, shoveling cake in your mouth. Well done. Um, and it's really clear that you are really loving this cake. So I'm just like, wow, you really like my cake, don't you? Just confirming what I already know to be true. Um, <laughs> let's look at this question now. You like Chicago, don't you? 
You like Chicago, don't you? Don't you? You like Chicago, don't you? Maybe we were out all day together seeing the sights of Chicago and you were having the best time and I could see that you were having a great time. And when we get home, I'm just like, wow, you like Chicago, don't you? And I'm happy, I'm happy you like Chicago. Okay, last example. They're happy, aren't they? They're happy, aren't they? They're happy, aren't they? They're happy, aren't they? I can see they're happy. Everybody can see that they're happy, this person or these people. And I'm just stating the obvious. I'm confirming what we all know. They're happy. Okay, so that is it. That wasn't bad, was it? Okay, I hope that now you can see and hear the difference and, and the difference in emotion and message when we use rising tone with tag questions and falling tone with tag questions. And really all you need to do is just practice hearing these things and maybe producing them. And the more you practice and the more you listen, the better you will get. All right, I'll see you next time. 